Um, no, we just, this has not been a track we've really practiced or qualified well at. I mean, again, the conditions are dramatically different than what we're going to race tomorrow. So I, I feel more um, confident in kind of the process that we've got to, to get ready for the race versus you know, going out here and, and being super fast. Now, we, we tried the best we could, but it uh, certainly the car is not set up well for these conditions. As some teams had tire issues, did you guys have any, or do you feel like you were conservative on air we, pressures or what? We did not have any tire issues, um, but you know, I'm sure there's you know, there's always going to be tire issues here and there, especially on a track that fast um, early on, early in the morning. You're, you're going to have issues like that for sure. Any four Toyotas are left as this round of eight continues. Um, what does it say about where the manufacturers are? And uh, there's all, there's usually a lot of talk about how Toyota is outnumbered in a lot of ways to outnumber the field who's left battling for a championship. What does that mean for the manufacturer? Um, I mean, they they apply the resources to less cars, um, and obviously they've been pretty successful doing that. And um, really, over the last ten years, they've been solid when it really counts at the end, right? It's it's uh, you know one third, two thirds disadvantage, but when you get down to the final eight and you got half the field, it's, it's pretty good, right? So um, certainly I think that, you know, the way they do things is has been really successful. So it's hard for me to second guess that. Is Reddick and the 11 any sort of disadvantage not having kind of been in this position before? Um, I don't know about disadvantage. It's so week to week and really how fast you are on any given week. It's I mean, experience does matter. Certainly, I think uh, when you haven't been in this position before, certainly nerves could be uh, a factor, but uh, there's no disadvantage. Uh, the, the car doesn't know who the driver is or what team it is or anything like that. They just know, um, you know, how to uh, how to go fast. So the car doesn't know. It's just, you know, driver could be nerves. You he said on your podcast, now it's kill time. You, know, you can't, can't lay back at all. Got to make sure it's just 100%. Is it different? Is it where... You know, you're smart and very careful, and now you're willing to do more or what? No, I still think you got to be uh, really, you know, precise in the moves you make and, and certainly the the risk of the, that you take. I mean, I think we had you know, three finishes in the top seven last year. We didn't make it. There's a lot of different factors in that. We didn't have as many playoff points last year as well. So um, I think, you know, that kind of repeat performance probably would get you in. Uh, but who knows? I mean, we, we don't know. We're, we're just so week to week and you, know, you really can't think about the end result. You just have to think about the next shot. And that's that's this weekend. Do you still consider this as your year? Is it do you still consider this as your year to get this? Well, I mean, it's, it's eight of our years so far. Uh, I mean, it, it's not mine to lose, others to gain. Um, it's there's all an equal shot for, for everyone. I mean, it doesn't mean all the cars are equal. It doesn't mean all the teams are equal. But certainly, um, everyone's got an equal shot uh, going into these last four races. So I feel as good about it as I had before. Um, you know, this today doesn't change any of that. Tomorrow we'll have a good solid day, and we'll just keep marching towards the goal, right? And uh, but it's not like you really you have control of it, and they got to take it from you. That's not it's not the way you know racing really works. Does the behavior on track any change at all? At this point in the playoffs, are people racing more mindful of you guys that are still competing for the championship, or does it get even crazier because they mm -hmm. still have agendas they need to get done before the end of yeah, the year? Yeah, I mean, I think typically this time of year you do see a little bit of give and take with those that are not in in the playoffs. Um, I think it just kind of depends on you know, are you racing for a win against someone that hasn't won that year. That's a little different, but certainly I think there is some give and take that happens on the racetrack that you don't necessarily see. Um, it's just, a, to me, it's a common courtesy for, for those that, you know, if the roles are reversed, you would hope for the same courtesy. So, so you don't look at this 30-point gap between you eight guys as a 30-point gap. You look at it as you guys are all pretty even then. Yeah, I mean, I just think that everyone has an equal opportunity to go out there and win the race, right? I mean, I think there's some that have had historically good uh, finishes on whether it be these types of tracks or Homestead or Martinsville, but it again it's just it's so week to week and you just never know what's going to happen all the extra stuff that can happen the cautions and you know, when do they fall and how's your you know do you get caught up in a wreck on a restart like all those things are factors right so i think we all equally have uh, the same amount of opportunity to, to go out there and you know punch our ticket how do you learn to balance the risk reward especially of this race um the opening race of the third round uh, because obviously you know you want to win but 
You have two more opportunities. Yeah, I mean, I. It, it certainly shouldn't be desperation time for anyone. I don't think anyone's, you know, in this situation where it's like, I don't know. I'm sure you guys will ask someone that finished kind of poorly. Is it a must win? Like, it's not. You just got to keep being solid every stage. One, two, and when you get down to the end. So it's just, you just got to be solid. And you got to be really solid. You've got to not, not, not make mistakes and you got to have good luck. And that's that's all the factors that goes into who's going to make it. How much is how much is luck a factor in this round compared to other rounds? Mm, it's a little less in this round for sure. I think that certainly the drivers and the teams uh, control a little bit more of their destiny. That doesn't mean that you know it's if you if you're back in 16th or 18th and you get caught in a wreck, that's not bad luck. That's you shouldn't have been back there. You, you called yourself to be back there. So luck gets thrown around a lot for sure, but. I think that certainly um, you, you, there's more luck created in this round than, than others, for sure. Benny, how closely have you looked at the other seven drivers? You're an analytical guy. Have you dug dug into the other seven and kind of does anything stand out? Any one stand out going uh, who's made it to this round? Um, no, not my team has. Um, have I focused on it? I have not. Um, it's been more of just kind of focusing on what I got to do to win this weekend. Uh, prepare for this weekend and that's all I've really studied to be honest with you because I can't control um, you know I don't know what they're bringing to the racetrack I don't know how they're going to execute restarts I don't all I can control is like my car and my you know what I do the effort I put in uh, so it's it's really hard to look at others and say well what do I what am I going to have to do who am I going to be racing you're, you're racing yourself and really um, if you get the best out of yourself, you're, you're going to win nine times out of ten. Last week, you wanted your crew chief to flip the stages, and then you, but you wanted to make sure and get into the round. How often are you into what decisions are made? You know the big plan, right? How often are you in the car going, I wish they'd do something else, but I go with my crew chief, Gabe Hart? Yeah, I mean, they got such a bigger and better view of everything going on and the bigger picture. and. You know, it's, we had that discussion beforehand, right? I mean, we I thought certainly we were going to be an easy top five finish um, last week, you know, really battling those top three. But we just had to take points. We had to lock ourselves in at the first opportunity, right? Because you just don't know what can happen beyond that. So I think we, although it, 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 it shouldn't be a detriment to win stages. <laughs> it's just crazy that, like, won the stage oh that's gonna be bad right it's not shouldn't be bad to be up front but it's just the track position so important on road courses because you can't pass that it's um it's big it's where you have to flip them or else you know you, you know your day is just going to be really bad how frustrating is that for you how hard is that it's, in the car it's frustrating but it's you know it's a strategy game it all starts with qualifying right if you qualify well you can flip and you'll stay up front the entire race unless you make a mistake you will stay up front even it doesn't matter really the speed of your car so I think uh, it all starts with that, and yeah, we just work our way backwards in these type tracks. Have you even begun to think about Homestead next week at all? Have you prepared? Or? A, a little bit, uh, but I, most of the focus has all been um, right here at, at Vegas. But yeah, I've, I've put a little time into Homestead. How does your car feel uh, this weekend, and then how do you feel about your mile and a half program um, for this <clears> round of eight? Yeah, I mean, the mile and a half program has been great. I, I don't have a whole lot of complaints with it for sure. Um, you know, it's, it, it is frustrating on days like today where you know, I, I try really hard, but I can't get the result out of the car that I'm wanting it to. But, you know, it's it, these just aren't the conditions. I'd say it's going to be so much hotter tomorrow. Um, you know, the, the way you have to drive is going to be so much different than, than it was here in practice that I'm not going to get too caught up in speed and all that stuff. Uh, as long as I get the feel I need, we're going to be fine. Yeah. 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 Danny, you mentioned like having the confidence in this process and, and knowing that the conditions are going to be different. So is that different for you mentally than years past where you're not rattled by where you are on the speed chart? Yeah, I mean, I think that comes with experience for sure. I mean, but I, I can't say that I didn't have a nervous moment at Kansas. I mean, with, with the crew chief saying, you know, are you sure we're going to be okay? And yes, we're fine, we're fine. And so uh, I think that, uh, you know, when you got good leaders like that, it's always makes it a little bit easier to, you know, calm, calm yourself down a little bit. And, and that an experience that I've done this quite many times and know that, you know, I can't get caught up too much. When I look at past history of Vegas, it's like, you know, we qualify in the teens, we practice in the 20s. That's just what we kind of do. Were you one of the ones out there watching the Eclipse earlier? 
I was. Yes. Yeah, what are you, your thoughts on that? Uh, it was, it's better with three pairs of sunglasses than it was those plastic. <laughs> <laughs> Shady <laughs> you had to defend yourself this week about your outspokenness, uh, but you were like that for a lot of your career as well. So at some point, you had to decide it was worth it for you. I to, wasn't. Well, you got kind of quiet there after you got Twitter fined and stuff. True, that's true. But I, I think even from the very beginning, I've always been outspoken and, and whatnot about you know, certain important issues. Um, but yeah, I think that it's really important to, to have. Uh, the drivers speak on you know topics that are super hot and important on the subject um be able to show their personalities that's all part of what what really makes the sport go your so CL personally how do you how did you decide that like whatever repercussions come with that whatever blowback is you can manage it would be not a distraction or worth it to you to take that risk yeah i mean i think certain of a certain amount of it is just um You've been around the sport a long time. You feel comfortable in your situation. Um, uh, I've, I've worked with a owner in Joe Gibbs that has seen it all from sports athletes, right? I mean, he's been in the locker room with some of the probably the craziest athletes he's you know you could imagine, right? And so, uh, I mean, he had to put up with Kyle Busch for a really long time. So I mean, certainly, I, I'm a cakewalk at this point. So, uh, but no, it, it, to be serious, it's. I just think that you know he allows us to, to kind of be ourselves, and he he knows that you know, as long as we are professionals and we do things uh, and we prepare the right way on the racetrack, then then he's good with us being ourselves, and obviously that's shown in the results, right? He's um, you know when when Kyle came over, um, you know he wasn't won it, and then we you know took him on, and he's he's won a lot of races and, and championships for that team. Your so COO told, told me today. Mm -hmm. So then why is it viewed by some like Jeff that doing that is a distraction or how is it a distraction? Um, I, I, I'm not really sure, honestly, and, and I'm, you know, really he can have that opinion for sure, but he's not in our meetings. So I don't know how he would have that information for sure. The CEO of your company today told me, he said, while Joe Gibbs probably wouldn't be as outspoken as you are, that you do it well without you know going over the line and that if it motivates you, that's what counts. Like as long as you get the job done and if it motivates you, then then yeah. that's the deal. Well, I mean, that's the thing about talking smack sometimes, right? Is that you, if you do it, you, you better be good and you better back it up. So, um, you know, sometimes it, you throw yourself out there to say, all right, well, I've said it, now I gotta go do it, right? So I think that that's been a big part of you know, what's happened over the last few months. Michael, all right, last question. To go to a lot more races, especially lately. Obviously, he's just a regular guy to you guys, but what kind of an impact, especially when he's an owner that hasn't been able to be there in the past, what kind of impact can they have? Or what has he had just being there the last few weeks for you guys? Yeah, I mean, I the mean, biggest- not gonna make the cars faster. No, no, but I think he's brought some very good intel into our meetings on mindset, right? On how do we get better individually uh, as a team? He's obviously been part of team sports for forever, and I think that you know he's at times heard things in meetings where he's like, I, I don't like that, and and you know we need to be more self-reflecting on what we need to do better, and that goes a such a long way with our team. The next thing you know, everyone's saying I, I, I instead of they, they, they. So. Um, you know, he, he's found out real quick, right? That the competition does not care about our agenda, right? They do not care what we want to accomplish and um, you know, about messing up our day. I, they just don't care. They should, because we don't care about anyone else's day. And so we have to do the best we can and you know, the chips have got to fall where they may, but his mindset on um, self-reflection and getting better as a team is been really helpful the last few weeks. And you mentioned he had been in marketing meetings in the past. Yeah. Was it, this almost sounds like this is even competition related, or is it still? Or yeah. Is he getting involved in more meetings, or is this still yeah. the marketing he, stuff you talked he about? Is, a few weeks he's ago? getting involved in more meetings, and you know, more. He's listening ninety nine percent of the time. Uh, but when he hears something he doesn't necessarily like, not necessarily on. You know, he doesn't know that that's the bolts of it, right? But if he hears something that he doesn't like. As far as you know, self-reflection is concern, concerned, uh, he'll point that out. That you know, we, we need you know, for every one finger pointing at you, there's three pointing right back at, at you. So you need to always think about what you need to do better, and that's a great, great advice to live by. Thank you, guys.